Welcome to All That Matters with Mike and Ross, conversation show about what's happening in the world of markets, investing, and wealth management. My name is Mike Antonelli, market strategist with Baird. Joining me today is Ross Mayfield, my friend, investment strategy analyst with Baird. Ross, this is going to be fun. You ready for this? I'm excited, man. Let's do it. This is a brand new show. We, we hope to bring this to you every month, maybe every few weeks, where we talk about what's going on in the world, especially with respect to your money, and not in a big, complicated, jargon-filled way. We're just going to try to give you our takes on what matters and what really doesn't matter, right? So really all that matters to you. On our very first episode, this one right here, we're going to talk about a lay of the land. It's We're through the first quarter of 2023. We're going to talk about how we got here, what the market did, and where we're going for the rest of the year. So, Ross, let me sum this up first. Let's sum up the first quarter of the year. Uh, we'll just do some quick market returns. So the Dow uh, up about 1%. So the Dow didn't do super great in the first quarter. The S&P up 7.5%, actually really good for a quarter. Triple Q, which is that tech-heavy, growth stock-heavy index, up 20%. Uh, small caps up about 2.5%. And a 60-40, kind of a standard portfolio for uh, for wealth management, 60-40 diversified portfolio, up about 5.6%. So a decent quarter. The 10-year ended at 393, so yields dropped a little bit uh, from their highs. But remember, last quarter, the fourth quarter of last year was actually also positive. So now we have back-to-back -back positive quarters in the markets. That's really great. Ross, I'm going to give you some evidence-based insight. Before I do that, I have to say past performance, no guarantee of future results. It's something we have to say, right? It's just, it's just, so those tidbits I'm giving you are, they're just evidence-based insights. Uh, so the S&P gained greater than 7% in the first quarter, like I just said. Uh, that's happened 16 times in history, and the full year has never been lower in any of those 16. Uh, the other piece of evidence-based insight I have for you. Since the end of World War II, we've seen the S&P fall in a prior year, so last year. And then gain in the first quarter this year, that's happened 10 times in history. And April and the rest of the year was positive in all 10 of those. Again, I'm not saying this is going to happen. These are just what has happened in the past. Those are kind of evidence-based insights. Ross, why were we up 7%? Why, why was that? Why was Triple Q up 20%? What happened? Yeah, I mean, why was the market up? I think you, you mentioned it. So when big tech and big growth are up big, the market broadly is going to be up big because they have such a big weight. You know, you think about the tech sector is such a behemoth in the U.S. markets. And those companies have done really well. Why have they done really well? I think it's a few things. I mean, one, you know, they, they fell so much last year that I think there's there's people starting to be like, this is a good entry point for some really, really high quality and dominant companies. Um, but also rates fell. You mentioned it, particularly post Silicon Valley bank crisis. Um, Short-term rates plummeted. Uh, growth stocks tend to do better when rates are falling. That's kind of been the relationship we've seen over the last few years, especially. And so big growth, big tech dragged the market higher, and those stocks are working in. It's good for the market overall. And frankly, right, the economic data wasn't as bad as we thought. I think the, the, the whole bearish case right now, and certainly at the start of this year, was earnings are going to fall, and the economy is going to drop, and home prices are going to drop, and all these things. And and jobs data was people were going to start losing their jobs. And while that has happened in Silicon Valley, and there's been issues in Silicon Valley, it hasn't happened kind of across the nation, right, Ross? There's, those, those big worries just haven't manifested. Yeah, the early part of the year was like blowout economic growth, reacceleration in the economy, consumers outspending, people getting jobs, all at the same time that inflation is coming down. Now, it's proving a little bit sticky and harder to get down than the Fed wants, but it's headed in the right direction, and the economy hasn't really cracked yet. Even the Silicon Valley banking crisis in mid-March did not really break the economy in a meaningful way, and stocks rallied into quarter end. So there's a lot of resilience, a lot to be happy about. There was a two-week stretch there, Ross, right, where every question we had was about a like bank crisis and, 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 and is my money safe? I wrote a blog called Anxiety, just kind of dealing with the fact that these things happen from time to time. So what, what else are you hearing right now as we kind of transition? What, what is the top of mind amongst clients and, and the media and everybody you hear from? Yeah, I mean, speaking about anxiety, the number one question that I've gotten over the past couple of weeks is this idea of the de-dollarization of the world and the, the status of the dollar as the reserve currency kind of waning as China and Russia and Saudi Arabia kind of press those buttons. Um, and so that's by far the number one question that I've got. What's your take on that topic, Mike? Yeah, I, I've got a bunch too. And, and it's funny, Ross, it, it's like almost a con, like a coordinated media story. Like it, it's from like news. It's in it's in internet blogs, it's all over the place. And so I, I said, you know, how often does this happen? How often do we talk about de-dollarization? And I did a little search and a little research and I found uh, three images, Ross, three articles uh, about de-dollarization. The first was in 1975. Uh, the second was in 2002 and the third was in 2011. So we talk about this all the time. And my take is, hey, it's just, it's just 
you know, noise. It's just absolute noise. That there's no data at all that supports de-dollarization. That supports that the dollar is losing losing its reserve currency status. That could be a whole other video. Maybe we do that, Ross. But there's there's nothing that I there's just there's no there's no market or currency big enough in the world to support the world's wealth. The United States provides assets to the world to invest in, and they do. We're the biggest consuming nation in the world. We send people dollars. They send us goods. They have to do something with those dollars. Okay, so Ross, what like? Yeah, yeah, how you do? Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And 60% of the world's uh, currency reserves are, are U.S. dollars still, declining slightly over the past couple of decades, but still 60%. Um, the next closest is 20%, and that's the euro. Then it's Japanese yen, Great British pound. It's a lot of friends on the list of the U.S. before you get yeah. down uh, to China, which is something like you know one, two, three percent, not meaningful. Um, as you mentioned, the, the Chinese currency pool is not as deep. It's not as liquid. There's capital controls. So I could see a world where the dollar maybe loses like a little bit of dominance over a longer period. Uh, but it's it's not, in my opinion, being replaced by the Chinese yuan. It's just not yeah. ready for the big time in that way. Yeah. Just try not to let too many headlines scare you out of a, a comprehensive financial plan because you're going to get this kind of stuff going to happen all the time to you. You're, you're going to see so many things, not only from the media, but from your friends. I wrote a blog called They, which I said the biggest kind of danger to a, to a financial uh, plan is is they, right? Somebody else telling you what to be afraid of. So just precaution you not it's, to. Not it's, to. it's the perfect story. It's enemies on foreign shores, yep. weaponizing our currency, weaponizing our assets. It's the perfect thing to kind of spark fear amongst the, an audience base. And so it's it, you're right. It's going to come yep. up again. Yep. We can talk about it in five years when it happens again. So let's wrap up here. We're going to talk about kind of what do you like right now? It's it's April. We're you know we're a week into it. What do you like about the economy and the markets, and what do you hate? Give me kind of both of those. Sure. So what do I like? Um, we mentioned the market's resilience. I like that, but I want to talk about the U.S. consumers. So uh, over the past eighteen months, facing high inflation, you know, rising rates, a, a really tricky economic environment, and because of such a strong labor market, the consumer has not blinked. Real spending is up. People are on planes. If you've been in an airport, it's chaos. If you've been yep. to a movie, it's chaos. If you've been to even a mall, which we're supposed to be in secular decline, chaos. People are out. Yep. They're spending. They might be unhappy about it, um, but the consumer fuels our economy, and they are out and getting after it still to this day. So that's that's really exciting. What do you like? I just like the kind of resilience of the market. We, we mentioned that there's been a lot of bad news thrown at it, and it's actually hung in there. So I like the resilience. I like the fact that inflation's falling. You can see it. Not only in consumer data, you can see it in producer data, so kind of both sides of the coin. Uh, I also like the fact that the housing market has stayed really firm in the light of 7%, 8% mortgages. I mean, the, the, the thing that really tends to hit the market and, and the average consumers when housing prices fall and when stock prices fall and when, when somebody in Eau Claire, Wisconsin, or somebody in Atlanta, Georgia, or somebody in uh, New Mexico gets hit by a tidal wave of of kind of negative asset prices. And that just hasn't happened. Russ and I are trying to be like all rosy. And there are things that we, like the economy is slowing. Interest rates are high. There are things to worry about, right, Ross? Oh yeah, 100%. I mean, uh, the manufacturing sector is in contraction. There, there's some data that says it's at the lowest of this cycle. Um, that's not a big part of our economy, but it does drive a lot of the, the activity. Um, so that's been getting hit. I mean, housing you mentioned has held up really well in the face of higher rates, but it's certainly not um, you know, expanding rapidly. People are having trouble, you know, with affordability. And, and maybe you'll talk about that a bit, but the economy is slowing. This is going to happen every, you know, six, seven, eight years, a, a recession. I don't think it's going to be a really deep or, or lengthy recession, but recessions are going to happen. And, and it seems like we're headed towards one right now, or at least some sort of slowdown. So you never want to see that. Right. So I, I mean, Ross, you think, I, I think the market's just going to bounce in a range for most of the year. Like it's just, there's, when we get too high, the, the bearish cracks show up. When we get too low, the, the bullish optimism shows up. It's just, I, I don't think the market's really compelling to the upside all that much, but I also think the downside isn't as bad as some people think. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, not to not to hammer this point, but the the bears had every single thing they could have wanted in the form of a banking crisis, higher rates, inflation sticky, and the market didn't even really come close to retesting the lows from last October. So there's a real resilience there. Um, upside is tough. I think we need some sort of catalyst that really is hard to find in the next, you know, couple of months. But, um, but I think you're right. I think the lows have been put in. Well, thank you guys for joining us on our first episode of All That Matters. We look forward to doing a lot more of these, uh, talking about all sorts of things. Maybe we'll talk about whether the bear market's over. Maybe we'll talk about whether we're in a new bull market next time. But uh, look for more content from us, Ross. This is going to be great. Can't wait, man. Thanks for having me. See ya.